Hello. Hello and good evening to all of you. How are you doing today? Good evening to Isha. Let me start from the beginning. Good evening, Sam. Good evening, Mantasha. Good evening, Amlan. Nice to see you all. Hello, Ashish. How are you doing? Siddhi. Do a, I know you people are the regular ones. Hello, Supriya. Mohit. Welcome to you. It's the first time I know that. Now, Rajesh. Welcome to you as well. Sasi Kiran. Hello to you. I remember having had a chat with you, all of you. Isha. Good evening to you. Yes. So it's good to see the energy here. Vivek. Yes, I apologize for the late beginning today. This will not happen like this. Mehroon, hello to you. Uh, sir, is it because of the coal shortage? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's another reason. I'll tell you what that is. I'll tell you. Okay, Isha, good to have you here as well. So let's begin the discussion. Okay, it's a very good uh, discussion today. Hello, RK. RK, it's very good to have you again. I remember that uh, you were a little upset a couple of months back, but it's very good to have you back again in the live discussions. I will ensure that I will personally respond to each of you, right? In case there is a doubt, in case there, there are issues, right? Good evening to each of you. Turn around. Okay, good that I also turn around today. Rajesh, good evening. So we will begin the Gazette discussion today. It's a wonderful day and we have got some really good articles to cover, right? So today is 13th of uh, October 2021, and I welcome each of you to the Gazette discussion today. Uh, your daily guide to UPSC current affairs, right? So let's begin. Before anything, what was the reason for my delay? The delay uh, was because I was collating all the data regarding what we have covered in the Gazette in the last uh, uh, eight to nine months and how that fared in respect to UPSC examination. And you'd be happy to know that what you are viewing now that has covered uh, 18 questions directly. It has helped solve 18 questions directly in the Gazette magazine and eight questions indirectly, right? So places like uh, Dhola Veera got covered in the magazine directly. We have covered Pangolin, right? We have covered a number of other things. If you remember, just a few days back, we covered the whole tribe and there was a question if it is a language, if it is a, a cultural entity, what not? And the answer was very simple and straight. Similarly, we have covered um, the rock phosphate. We have covered it in, in, in two of the snapshots. Why rock phosphate was in news and India starting the Aat Nirbhar Abhyan, right? So there are n number of articles. Yesterday also I demonstrated them and I will keep doing that. We will popularize this because this is a great product. We are available Monday to Friday, uh, each of the days with the current affairs, not only from seven to eight newspapers of that day, uh, a couple of articles pending from the previous days, but also government reports, important reports in the feature art article section, right? So uh, here we begin. Yes, I remember each of you. RK, I do remember. It's good to have you. So, all right. So today on Gazette, we have some very good articles. First, the snapshot on uh, Global Multidimensional Poverty Index, who, which is the organization which releases Multidimensional Poverty Index. If you know, type in the comment section here, right? So we will have a quick snapshot to understand what this report spoke about. The second one is on Global Methane Pledge. Who has pledged? Why has, have they pledged about specifically methane? We will understand. And the th third one is uh, guidelines for cyber security in power sector, specifically in power sector, right? Moving ahead to this day in history, we have dedicated to uh, disaster risk reduction. Do you know a framework from Japan, a specific framework from Japan and its name? What is the name of that uh, uh, specific uh, framework? It was signed in the year 2015. UPSC has asked that question. We have that in this day in history. Right? So uh, put that name here in case you know that. All right. Next uh, we have is the featured news section, uh, which is at 6.30 p.m. live. It is on India's nuclear doctrine. India's nuclear doctrine. This becomes very relevant time and again, where, uh, where we have North Korea in focus, speaking about nuclear disasters, Pakistan speaking about nuclear retaliation. And then we have now uh, General A.Q. Khan, who just passed away day before yesterday in Pakistan. He transmitted the Pakistan's nuclear technology to Iran, to Libya, and to other countries, right? So uh, in that context, we will understand what is India's nuclear doctrine? How does India treat its nuclear uh, energy? So in 
India has a peaceful nuclear program and also a military nuclear program. But India does not want to attack people, its neighbors. So India does not have a first use policy. India also has a deterrent policy. India will keep demonstrating its technology, right? So we will understand what are the hazards, what are the issues, and what are the different treaties. For example, non-proliferation treaty, CTBT, and uh, and nuclear uh, suppliers group, right? So this is feature article at 6:30 p.m. An interesting one. All right, Sendai framework. All of you are correct. So we will, this day in history is dedicated to Sendai framework. All right. Image of the day is on a tropical cyclone, Kompasu. Where is it happening? Where is it happening? Tell me that in the comments. Terms for today are uh, freight train three shul. Trishul, and then we have another one, uh, wastage efficiency rating, right? This relates to water efficiency in purifying water. The third one is a kit for rapid silicosis test, silicosis test. And the fourth one is surrogate advertising, a concept of surrogate advertising and why it is in news. Three editorials that we have for today are one on data protection in India. The second one is on um, a stimulus for the government in India. And the third one, animal husbandry, right? So you will be able to relate to animal husbandry article if you have gone through the snapshot, in fact, the feature article of uh, the agricultural survey, SASS, SAAS of CSO that we discussed just two days back in featured news, right? Case study of the day is from Rajasthan, right? How uh, these fa farmers are using technology to develop agriculture. So let's begin the discussion. Hmm. Right, Philippines, all of you correct. It's happening in Philippines. So name another cyclone that has happened in Philippines just a couple of months back. Important cyclone, also towards China and Philippines, right? Name that cyclone. Okay, snapshot one is on Global Multidimensional Poverty Index, MPI 2021. It is released by United Nation Development Council, right? Uh, this council was established in 1960s, right? Its headquarters is in New York and uh, also Oxford. Yes, somebody did mention Oxford here, Oxford Poverty so it was uh, Satyam Saurabh, yes, UNDP and Oxford. They both of them released uh, this index, Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. And uh, see, we have had human development indicators, right? HDI by United Nations. But multidimensional poverty index is a notch better than that because it, 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 it talks about the poverty at multiple levels, not only the level of rupee or the amount of dollar one earns, it also talks about the nutrition status. It also talks about the health status of that individual. It also talks about the uh, the education status and overall life indicators. So before understanding what this article uh, has concluded, what this uh, uh, index has concluded for the world this time, we must understand what this uh, what this MPI is about. So MPI is basically about uh, 10, 10 important parameters, 10 parameters. And if one fails in more than three parameters, then they are multidimensionally poor. Right. So 10 parameters over health, education and standard of living. Right. We have mentioned this in the magazine. It is also uploaded on the website. You can also get to the Gazette PDF if you want to. Right. I will quickly explain to you these parameters. So uh, health parameters, education parameters and standard of living. Three of them. Right. We have had this HD in HDI, but this specifically goes into those specific parameters. So in health, it talks about nutrition and child mortality. If in a family, a child has passed away in the last five years, that, that family will be, that household will be red flagged. Red flagged. That means they have failed here. And if they fail in more than three parameters, they, that family will be multidimensionally poor. Right? So this is uh, uh, one criteria. Another criteria is nutrition. So any adult under the age of, age of 70 years, right, if their nutritional information is available and or, or, or of the child if it is available and they are not uh, nutritionally uh, adequately fed, then they will be multi that family will be treated as multidimensionally poor. One of the parameters for that will be this. Right? So uh, if a family fails in more than three of the parameters, more than three, then that family is multidimensionally poor, right? Similarly, uh, in uh, education, we have years of schooling and school attendance. Not only years of schooling, but school attendance, both. Similarly, in standard of living, they are very inter interesting ones. So one of them is cooking fuel. Are we using cooking fuel which are solid in nature, like cow dung, wood, charcoal or coal? If yes, this is a failure. Right. So this will be counted as failure in one of the parameters. Then sanitation, if adequate sanitation or uh, is not available or people are using joint uh, toilets, then that is a red mark, red flag. Similarly, drinking water, if it is not potable water, not worth drinking, 
the particulate matter is less or it is more than a particular limit then it will not be a good drinking water similarly for electricity con uh, connections household so household if it is a pakka house or kacha house if the flooring is done properly or not these are the indicators assets if uh, the family owns uh, 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 one not not more than one of the assets so if they own only one they will be considered as poor if they own more than one then it is fine so what are the assets animal cart bicycle motorbike refrigerators radio tv telephone computer so the families are judged on these parameters and in case they fail in uh, more than three parameters then that family will be considered as multidimensionally poor right so this is uh, the thing and now it is done majorly for the developing countries the underdeveloped and developing countries right so not only monetary level of uh, standard of poor but other conditions also that is why called as multidimensional poverty index a far better index for uh, one to gauge the level of poverty around the world so let's quickly understand what the report says right so the report says that uh, uh, around uh, six out of 6 billion people it has uh, it has uh, researched on around 1.3 billion that means almost 25 percent people they are in multidimensional poor poverty index now this is where i want to point an asterisk asking you to note this statistics down 1.3 billion people around 25 percent of the people that it has researched on the population of the world is around 7.5 billion right now right so uh, 13 5 6 and 13 to 78 so one sixth people are multidimensionally poor in the country, right? Not only that, uh, half of them who have been counted here as multidimensionally poor, they are children, the most vulnerable. And majorly from sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. We are talking of countries, see, uh, South Asia is the, is the region around the world which is the most populated. We have countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, amongst the 10 most populous countries in the world. Right, uh, leaving apart countries like smaller countries like Japan, Russia. Although these are also uh, amongst the ten populated countries. However, we are talking of South Asia. Right, so these countries are highly densely populated, and also good population exists in these countries. So South Africa, uh, I'm sorry, South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Do remember this. Now, not only that, uh, uh, most of the countries are middle-income countries, right, who are in multidimensional poverty index. This indicates that uh, the middle-income countries being here, that means there is a disparity of income in these countries, huh? right? So do remember this, right? Now, some facets of poverty are using, you know the facets, right? If you get, it, get back to the basics that we just covered, so uh, families don't have this uh, good cooking uh, gas, they have solid fuel, right? They do not have standard uh, housing, they have substandard housing very very clearly mentioned they're under nourished and uh, they have to take a lot of time to get and fetch themselves water this is what indicates poverty right poverty is also rel related to the status of women right so it has been found that those families which are multidimensionally poor there the cases of intimate partner violence are high see so you are we are linking not only economic standards we are also linking the human development standards Right? For example, intimate partner violence. Why do we talk of IPV? Just because the uh, United Nations also has presented a report on IPV. Right? Okay. Uh, and another important thing of the report, it, 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 it is mentioned in today's newspaper itself, that there is a huge disparity amongst ethnic groups. Ethnic groups as, as far as uh, the disparity in uh, living standard and uh, poverty is concerned. So, specific ethnic groups are not in that uh, multidimensional poverty range and certain ethnic groups are. These are, you know, fodder material for uh, prelims exam as well, right? So these are some important uh, uh, outcomes of the report, right? Moving ahead, uh, uh, see, uh, one, one good thing that uh, was indicated in this MPI index was that before COVID, there were a good number of countries which had actually helped, it, helped themselves, right? Grow out of this multidimensional poverty index. But after COVID struck, the things have gotten back to the same status right now, right? The uh, report also says that in India, around 400 million people we are talking of 40 crore people under this multidimensional po poverty index so note this down around 400 million people in multidimensional poverty index 2021 report right a good statistic that you can use not only that if you see the tribes in india half of them half of the report says that not me report says that uh, half of the scheduled tribes are multidimensionally poor one third of uh, the scheduled caste are multidimensionally poor and a good proportion of around uh, the uh, 
around one third proportion of OBC community, other backward classes are also multidimensionally poor. This indicates that uh, uh, the uh, poverty is also related to, multidimensional poverty is also related to the specific population groups, right? So targeted uh, schemes are required. This is important, right? Now, uh, it says that uh, five out of six people in India are multidimensionally poor and they are from either of these vulnerable communities, five out of six of them, right? So this is an important indicator which also makes us think that yes, probably government is doing right by having these uh, social sector initiatives for specific caste and uh, other groups, right? Other vulnerable groups. That's what we should mention, not caste, but vulnerable groups, right? This is the first report, a major report, right? We should have also covered this in one of the feature articles, but we have an interesting one in feature. So we covered this in one of the snapshots, right? It was present in the today's newspaper itself, right? Now, uh, if you are with me, we will go ahead to the next uh, next important article, right? First one was a big one. Now, uh, before going ahead, if you like this initiative, show some uh, love through likes, through likes. That's what I want. And uh, through comments and shares, that will be great. Now, uh, Vishal says, Sir, ye measure karne kaun aata hai hamare ghar? Koi to nahi aya abhi tak. <laughs> yes, see, uh, Vishal, there are... Uh, See, uh, they won't come directly to your place. How, however, uh, this is a, there is a sample size. There's something called a sample size. So they will not come to every home because that will not only take time during COVID times, it will also be tough for them to come. So they also take data directly from the government, right? This is one thing that they do. So they take census data. While in census, they do uh, survey a lot of things that each of us have. What community we belong to, what, how many vehicles we have, how many uh, household uh, uh, people uh, live, how many people are earning, how many are diseased. They also count the number of animals that we have, right? So uh, they take data from that. This is one thing. The other thing is that there is a sample size. They will not conduct this research among 1 million people in the city. They will go conduct in various population groups. They will go at different settlements, all the kind of settlement, and they will try to extrapolate this data. This is how they survey. Uh, yes, you can criticize that this uh, method of survey is not the most accurate. However, it does represent, it does represent a certain degree of uh, reality as well, right? So we will respect that and we will go ahead. But I, I like, I like the way you have put this, right? Okay, Mohit, thank you very much. So, uh, should we note down the matter which is highlighted only? See, you got to note down what strikes your brain as the most, uh, most relevant for you, right? It will be different for everybody. Some keywords are important. However, if you noted some data there, you got to note it down, right? For example, India, 381 million. Don't note down 381, it is a very, very, mm, uh, you know, specific figure. 400 million is a good figure. 400 million in India, right? Five out of six from vulnerable groups. You can put that down in essay. MPI states that, MPI 2021, like that. Okay, moving ahead, global methane pledge. What is this? This pledge has been taken by the developed countries, right? So we are talking of USA, European Union, and they have decided that they will curtail the amount of methane usage around the world. You know why? Because, uh, see, they are already striking down on carbon dioxide as one of the important uh, uh, global warming gases, right? Greenhouse gases. So carbon dioxide is one of the gases which is released in, in uh, industrial units, coal units, coal power plants, the vehicle industry, all of them, right? Methane is another gas which is released and methane specifically has got the global warming capacity which is 22 times more than carbon dioxide, 22 times more. We also have these uh, um, um, HFCs, right? Hydrofluorocarbons and all. So they have got the nitrous uh, uh, and halogen series. They have got far more potential to, to have glo glo global warming, right? But uh, right now we are striking down on uh, methane here because methane is one gas which can be curtailed through the, uh, uh, the artificial medium also because methane is another gas. See, CO2 contributes to global warming as much as 66% and methane to around 17%. And then it is CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons and then nitrous oxide. So although the CFCs and nitrous oxide they are present in less proportion but their proportionality to contribution is far high thousands of time thousands of time as compared to co2 but methane has got similar nature as carbon dioxide because if we uh, emit global warming gases through industrial processes methane also gets released so uh, we can reduce on methane very well this is the thing because of which this partnership was initiated right 
So yes, 28 times, 28 times, right? Now methane has got long lasting impact. Although it has present in the atmosphere for a shorter time, but it has got a very long lasting impact. That means it will cause global warming for a lot of time, right? Also, the amount of methane present in our atmosphere, it has doubled since the pre-industrial times. So all these countries have said that they will uh, reduce to a particular level, right? So they have said that uh, they will reduce the emission of methane 30% by 2033. 2030, 30% by 2030 of 2020 levels. This is what they have pledged, right? So uh, this is what you have to understand. And uh, these are the kind of initiatives you can mention in examples, right? And if a question like this comes, you can write down about what this initiative is about, right? Also, what are the contributors of uh, methane? So fossil fuel, one, agriculture, right? So wherever you have this animal dung, no, it's placed slowly and steadily methane gas keeps com com coming out. That is why the government programs are there, which says they will convert all this dung into biomass, right? So biomass conversion and the gas will be slowly utilized for, uh, you know, putting inside those pressurized cylinders and then selling it off biogas. But if it is not done in that manner, it will keep on releasing itself, right? Not only from agricultural waste, cattle dung, also from paddy fields. So methane is one byproduct of that place and depleting ice cover, very important. So as uh, the permafrost, the ice frost in, uh, in, in the Arctic region and Antarctic region, it starts to melt, a lot of methane was uh, frozen. A lot of methane was frozen into it. Slowly and steadily it is coming in the atmosphere. In fact, we have examples of ice burning, burning ice because we have methane gas present and it is coming up in the atmosphere. So this is one of the side effects of uh, global warming. Also, many of the diseases, they were many of the viruses, bacteria, protozoa, they were almost frozen, half dead. And they were almost, uh, you know, buried inside these kind of uh, permafrost, but they are coming alive. Nah, right? So this is one side effect of global warming and climate change, right? So do remember this, some extra information. Okay, moving ahead to uh, the next one. The next one, by the way, cyclone that I was speaking of was cyclone Infa, Infa, right? So... Uh, the third snapshot is on cyber security power uh, in the power sector. Now, just a few days back, we spoke of cyber insurance, right? Cyber insurance. We have insurance of life. We have insurance of uh, the property. We have insurance of agriculture. And then our uh, accident is also insured, right? Insurance means we keep on paying a very small amount of money. And in case some contingency happens, in case some issue happens, we get that. We get a huge chunk of money so that we are able to handle that uh, accident or some, some mishap some mishappening, right? So insurance is uh, that, right? We are insured. Similarly, there was something called a cyber insurance. That means if cyber fraud happens with me, if I'm a big organization, I have data, if I'm a bank, suppose I have bank, and I have uh, not only data of people, but money of people, and somebody forges everything and takes all my data, takes all my money, right? So somebody has cheated me online, and this is called as cyber, uh, say, uh, something related to cyber, right? Cyber security and cyber violations. Now, if I have insured, if I'm a bank and I have insured myself, I will get this, a part of this money back. All these people who are claiming that my data has been stolen, my money has been stolen, a part of that money will go to them also, right? My investigations against the person who has stolen, that can also be reimbursed. So this is called a cyber insurance. Similarly, uh, I have spoken this quite a few times that uh, uh, these times, these are the times when everything is getting converted into artificial intelligence, automated technologies, they are getting online, right, digital technologies, especially after Corona, right. And India has faced this ransomware threat three times. So India has to pay, has had to pay three times the amount it used to pay just a year back before lockdown. Three times. Why? Because number of terrorist uh, attacks, online terrorist attacks have increased. Terror, uh, 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 what I'm talking of is ransomware attacks, right? So since cyber threats have increased, therefore we need better protection as well, right? So uh, the people who actually create these kind of antiviruses, they are nobody but uh, people who crack these kind of uh, cyber threats. Right, so they catch the loopholes. Suppose it is Edukimi's website, and we have all the resources, right? And uh, for example, if we are selling uh, products for uh, say one one thousand rupees, see, so the total revenue of the organization suppose is one thousand rupee. Now, this the person who has committed this kind of crime, they know that this is the range of revenue in which they earn. They will start asking for uh, three hundred rupees out of this. 
and unless and until we pay them 300 rupees the website will not work all our functionalities will stop so india has had to pay in these ways three times the amount that it used to pay in terms of the ransomware and because of the same reason this is not only possible for the companies in digital domain it is also possible for the companies in power domain right now uh, just a couple of months back we saw a power outage in usa USA and the whole power supply line for the fluid for the uh, liquid power it was stopped it was because the whole technology is automated there it was stopped for a while and uh, the, the, there was a power outage in America just because of this cyber issue so India now says that India will lay down a cyber security guideline for the power sector this becomes very important because uh, the warfare now will not might not be physical warfare right haath se mukka mukki nahi hogi now it will be a digital warfare right countries will try to hack our own systems and there is something called as uh, strategic forces command sfc strategic forces command you know what is this so uh, if you have seen the prime minister moving there would be a person with him moving with a bag with a small briefcase black colored briefcase this is that is the one which contains uh, data for the nuclear codes right so uh, once it contains the most critical information for the prime minister and there are two three keys prime minister will have one key and another uh, a couple of more important gentlemen will have a gentlemen or ladies will have a key and through that they can launch this nuclear weapons so suppose this kind of strategic forces command its critical system is hacked india will it is possible that india might nuke itself there may be nuclear attack on india itself because somebody has hacked our system so the next level of warfare will be digital and that is why india is trying to defend its energy right now energy warfare is also possible right we are facing this energy warfare right now if you see the world over we are having this crisis right now big cities in india do not have that crisis but it is impending right that crisis will be happening see so shobit shobit has right now written uh, there is power cut in maharashtra right so uh, point being very simple that this could be a digital warfare along with power warfare and therefore what is required right now is to have um, procurement and testing of these kind of hardware and software before before installing them so if you remember government had initiated a scheme for uh, having trusted sources and trusted products in telecom sector in telecom sector so uh, product uh, products from uh, huawei company uh, huawei that was the one which was installing the 5g uh, technology in india so those chinese companies the, the government said that fine if you have been installing products till now we will not spoil your contracts but for 5g we will need trusted sources and trusted products we are talking of telecom similar thing is being done in the power sector as well so this is the important uh, update here now there are important reforms other reforms under uh, revamp distribution sector scheme what are the reforms we are trying to automate the whole system we are to we are to make that artificial intelligence enabled let me give you a couple of examples of what it is now what is the time of the day when there is more power consumption day so uh, night it is less in summers night it may be more because people use acs at home so peak time of demand of power this is one not only that can we have smart meters which tell us what is the uh, season in which there is more power consumption so that time the all the industries will be ready so that they have adequate amount of resources for creating power right what time of day can they forecast the demand uh, what about usage of renewable energy if we have this system and if we have automated controls this is what is under revamp distribution sector scheme right so automating it and making it more smart smarter than what it is right now so this is the third snapshot a good and important one right power sector is reeling under a lot of threats uh, cannot be covered in even an hour of discussion now moving ahead uh, the, uh, we have this day in history we have dedicated to disaster risk reduction right now what is this about so we are talking about uh, uh, the day this was initiated october 13 1989 and in 19 and in 2015 we had a very important framework right sendai framework in japan under which there were certain important things mentioned seven important pointers mentioned for reducing the disaster disaster at a specific place so this international day of for disaster reduction it was initiated by none other than united nation organization right uno right so we are talking about large scale small scale man made and natural disasters all of them right 
okay and it was also declared that this year is the year of make or break right so either we work towards disaster uh, risk reduction or we work against it and we have already seen india has faced huge number of disasters in the last one year what are we talking of you're talking of cyclones cyclone amphan was a huge disaster in india bangladesh and uh, uh, even nepal bhutan it had it uh, had its impact not only these we had increased number of landslides we have floods we have droughts we have forest fires all of them converging and increasing the threat specifically this year so that is why this year has been declared as make or a break here right okay featured news for the day nuclear doctrine of the country all right 6:30 maybe 5 minutes uh, quick 5 minutes of break for me and after that right okay moving ahead to tropical cyclone compasu in philippines you all know that philippines is also popular for another reason right i will i will say that word is award what award award was that tell me that award right which philippines has received all right so this is tropical cyclone compasu in philippines right Okay, I also mentioned cyclone um, uh, Imfa, Imfa, I N F A. All right, freight train Trishul. Now India is trying to capitalize on its present uh, potential in uh, in the carrier, in the train carrier sector. We are talking of the good trains, good trains. So one of the articles I read was India trying to uh, have a structure in which uh, we have two uh, two vessels. two of these containers placed above each other on the rail wagon two containers placed but it has its major limitations for example we have to increase the height of the electric poles right also the trains might run a little slower but at least they will carry double the cargo this is one of the advantages similarly india what india has done this time india has run one of the largest uh, trains so this train named as trishul it had 176 wagons imagine 176 bogies attached one behind the other it ran uh, at south india vijay wada to duvda and uh, so what has it uh, developed it has developed potential for india it has uh, made the services more efficient because it does not require manpower in only one go lot of uh, cargo and data will not data <laughs> cargo will travel from one place right turn around time so the time in which the wagon wagon moves from one place to another it has reduced right now and it will also turn around no so the effective time has decreased because of this manpower required has decreased now this is how railway will compete against other services we are talking of uh, roadways talking of airways talking of shipways so railway is one of the important networks through which um, inter country intra country uh, goods travel inside the country right all right the second one yes all right all of you shobhit ashish siddhi all of you are correct nobel peace prize and it was dedicated to maria risa because she fought against the uh, almost uh, dominating characteristics of the government in philippines the philippine government is having is busting racket against uh, um, uh, multiple things and it is operating a little uh, you know over the top and that is why she is uh, revealing all the kinds of uh, torture that the government is doing and she has received this prize along with the uh, a russian gentleman right so he is doing the same uh, again, uh, revealing the kind of atrocities of the government especially the chechenia region right all right the second uh, term in news is waste efficiency rating so this rating is uh, for the um, water purifiers right now the water purifiers that we use at our homes 20% of the water is consumed by us 80% goes waste 80% you can imagine that amount goes waste so if we are drinking 1 liter 2 liters of water per day around 8 uh, liters of that goes waste so this new rating will ensure that those kind of products are sold in market those are sold in market more than the others which have at least 40 30 to 40% of water consumption efficiency right so 30 to 40 units should be used and rest can be discarded right because they have excessive minerals so this is one also uh, they will be having some standard ratings for these kind of products so that they can be sold in the market in the best manner right so this is what this uh, wastage efficiency rating is about now whenever anybody talks to you about more efficiency in water resources you can talk of this no can you not 20% of water is being you is being utilized and 80% goes waste don't mention any brand name but this is standard amongst all the companies because we don't have that technology but now since we have that technology we will try and make the uh, machines more efficient right so this is a good case this becomes a good case a term and concept becomes a good case for you in case you know how to use it wisely right so uh, this standard mark will be provided from bis right and what do we do there's something called as tds whenever person from 
Kent comes to your home now, ask them what is the TDS. So he talks TDS is uh, around uh, 200. If it is 200, 220, so uh, this is fine, uh, right? So uh, TDS should be ideally around 150 to around 100, 150. So, but in places like uh, urban areas like Delhi, etc., it goes up to as an, as much as 400, 500. So particulate matter, important minerals, good minerals only. But if they are present in excess, this is not good for the body. It will get stored somewhere in the body and it is not good for the body, right? So we need to have an optimal range of the nutrients in water, right? So this is the update. Kit for rapid silicosis test. So silicosis test relates to uh, the presence of crystalline silica dust in the blood in the blood. We are talking of uh, a drop of blood and this test has been developed, this kit has been developed in Mumbai, right? It has been developed by National Institute of Virology. This is located in Pune, but this organization along with another institute, the National Institute for Occupational Health, they both have developed this kit and um, uh, this is a very good kit because it helps in understanding the silicosis uh, disease, right? Prevalence of silicosis in the individual, right? So it starts with uh, irritations in the uh, trachea and then it also develops into lung disease. So to prevent this, this kit has been developed. We are talking of crystalline silica dust content. Where is where, where do you find silica by the way? In what kind of uh, articles do you find silica dust content? Asbestos. Asbestos. Cement industry. Right? Silica. Silica is also found in uh, semiconductor uh, industry. So these are the places uh, people working here. This is a hazard for them. Right? Okay. So uh, Supriya says Ramon Magsese Award. Yes, Philippines. Yeah, it was uh, Philippines is the country. One of the Ramon Magsaysay was one of the important leaders who initiated the the uh, no, I think it was dedicated uh, for Ramon Magsaysay was one of the leaders of uh, Philippines, right? Right, Philippines. All right. Surrogate advertising. What is it? In case I am advertising Kingfisher, what does it mean? So. In case I am advertising a kingfisher, it actually means that probably I am advertising some of the wine products, alcohol products of kingfisher. But do we not also have water of kingfisher? We do. We do. Kingfisher has got airlines also. It had airlines also, right? So, in case, see surrogacy, it comes from the word surrogacy, right? So, in case we are doing ads for a product and it, and it leads to advertising another allied product of the same company, or another product which is not allied with it, but still those, those are banned and they get advertised. So this is called as surrogate advertising, right? I was not to advertise for that product, but, uh, uh, but it actually, I was to advertise for that product, but it actually led to advertisement of another product related to it, right? So for example, I always get confused in this mouth freshener, right? Uh, if I'm giving a uh, mouth freshener ad to do, I always feel that probably I am doing this ad for another company, Pan, Gutka, all those things, right? Although it was just a mouth freshener. But Pan Gutka is more than that, no, a little more than that, right? It is more addictive in nature. It does not only create some digestive, see, uh, mouth freshener creates some good effect in the body for the mouth, uh, helps in secretion of certain enzymes, digestion of food. But if we are talking about Pan Gutka and other products, so this is what is surrogate advertisement, right? If I, uh, you know, tear that small sachet and you know, put something in my mouth, it might seem as if I'm eating pan, whereas I'm not. So we are advertising something which we are not advertising for actually. So uh, some famous celebrities and you know who I'm talking of, right? Uh, so the big B. So uh, they were in news because of surrogate advertising. They, they took back their advertising because some of the ads which were conveyed indirectly were banned, right? Juma Kesri, Imperial Blue, music CDs, see, see? Imperial Blue music CDs, see? What are we advertising here? You can very well understand. Yes, you are correct. So Ashish is correct, Shivam and Shobit, all of you. Absolutely correct. So do remember the word uh, surrogate advertising. See, these are the kind of words. Uh, I just a few days back, I spoke of eco-anxiety. Eco-anxiety, right? And then uh, just today I heard another uh, very good term. I'm forgetting. So uh, surrogate advertising is one of them, right? Important yet uh, relevant words, right? Data protecting authority, uh, would you like to read this editorial by yourself? Click here to read, right? If you click on the page, go to the Educamy's web page and just go and click and read this editorial and let me know how, how it was, right? We are talking on the data protection authority in our country. The second one is on uh, governance, right? Uh, governance process and uh, giving a stimulus to it during these times, which is very important. And the third one talks on animal husbandry. Animal husbandry during these times, see, 
uh, India has got a status for agriculture, right? So a lot of people are employed in agriculture. Agriculture has allied industries. So there is fishing, there is animal husbandry, there is forestry, and there is food processing, all of them, right? In the states which are not so uh, empowered, which are really poorer, we will see that the proportion of animal husbandry and proportion of other activities allied to agriculture, for example, agricultural workers, laborers, not only that, uh, the proportion of wage laborers, wage laborers, they increase, right? The efficiency of everything else and uh, the wages earned, they are more than agriculture and animal husbandry. Right. So uh, there was a survey conducted on animal husbandry specifically and it pointed out to some very important results. Right. You got to go and this is uh, 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 this uh, this article you should be reading. Right. Animal husbandry is important to us because uh, we not only utilize the animal in our uh, in, in the effort it does. You know, in the agricultural areas, because everything is not ma mechanized, agricultural fields, we also utilize them for uh, milk products, right? So for biota products, right? Not only that, we also utilize them for their uh, uh, meat products, right? India is one of the largest exporters of meat, right? So uh, there are various advantages and therefore animal husbandry becomes one of the important sectors. So in one of the reports of uh, the rural area survey, SAAH survey, SAAH survey, I spoke of in the feature, a good proportion of the income is earned through animal husbandry. Around 35% is earned through agriculture, around 15% through animal husbandry uh, for a normal uh, person in the rural uh, uh, life. So it becomes 50% uh, and rest of 50 is earned through the other mechanisms, for example, participation in Manrega activities, right? So do remember this, right? And uh, I want you to read this editorial. Click here to read, go to the website and read it, right? Okay. Moving ahead, case study of the day is on this article. Uh, this is on uh, AgriBolo. So in Rajasthan, a new uh, app has come up. It is called as AgriBolo. What are they doing? They're trying to have end-to-end -end solutions for the agricultural farmers. So in case they need inputs, you just put that down on that app and they will give you that particular input. In case you have the product ready at your own home, right, paddy or uh, rice, it is completely developed, right, you want to sell it, so trading facility is also available online. They'll pick up the product, give you the money, the market rate for the same product, right. So what is it? It is called as AgriBolo, right, becomes a good case for you. So if you want to have this case in agriculture sector, just write AgriBolo, AgriBolo and initiated in Rajasthan is, is the fun, maybe the last point initiated in Rajasthan and what is it? A software or app designed for uh, providing inputs and price discovery, right? This, this is one point. The second one is end-to-end -end solution for farmers and third one in Rajasthan. This is how a case study can be put in your answer. This is how you should utilize this. And in case you don't have scope enough, just write AgriBolo for Rajasthan doing well in sector of end-to-end -end solution for farmers. So this is how you can use a case study in answer writing, right? Now, all I want you to do is put a thumbs up in case you like this effort from all of us. And, uh, and I would like to see you in uh, quickly, seven, eight minutes from now, 6.35, I will see you for uh, a very important discussion on India's uh, nuclear program, right? And after that, we will see you tomorrow again at 5.30, live discussion on uh, Current Affairs and Gazette magazine. And yes, keep noting down the important words because we are not superhumans. I have said this time and again, we keep forgetting and therefore noting down becomes very important, right? So I will see you very soon in a matter of uh, seven, eight minutes from now, right? So thanks for watching.